Hello my friends, how are you doing? Today I'm gonna do an absolute beginner's introduction into photo editing and Affinity Photo, something a lot of people have asked for. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. There are basically three different categories that you use to adjust or to edit your images. So the first one will be found down here by the layers tab on the right side. You have this icon here when you hover over it with your mouse, it says adjustments, which gives us a good idea of what we find in there. So you click on that and this gives you a pop up list and all of these are ways to adjust your image. For example, the white balance, black and white, brightness and contrast, the vibrance, the exposure, shadows and highlights. As you can see, all of these are things you want to adjust. If you think about it, I want to make my picture brighter, so I adjust the brightness. I want to have more color, so I adjust the vibrance, stuff like that. So these are adjustments of your image. Now, there is another category and these are filters. You can think about filters as artistic effects you can apply to your image, sometimes also tools to help you get, for example, the picture more blurry or more sharp, depending on what you want to do. So you have different categories here and you can see here, for example, you have a category for blur. There's a lot of different ways to blur your image. You have a category for sharpen, for distort. These are more artistic ways to edit your pictures. You can create noise or reduce noise. You can detect the edges, so these have more artistic ways to be applied to the picture. And the third way to edit your pictures are the tools on the left side. So you can see here you have a long list of tools. You don't need all of them as a beginner, but some of them are important. And these tools will help you to manipulate things on your canvas. If you're confused about anything of these tools and what they are, you can simply press F1 on your computer and this will open up a handbook for you and then you can simply enter here what you're looking for. For example, you say crop and click enter and there it says crop tool and this will explain to you the different things that this crop tool is doing. Now let me point out some of the tools you will use the most. The move tool to move around things, the crop tool to cut the size of your canvas or document. You have the selection tool for selections. You also have these selections, which has a freehand selection tool and also these kind of shapes. And this is another thing to point out here. If, if you have this little white triangle down here, this means you can click and hold to see more tools below that. You have the gradient tool, which I think you will use a lot. Then the paintbrush to paint things into, and this will also be used for masks and things like that. Then you have the eraser brush, which will also erase things in your image. And you have the clone brush, which is used to clone one part of the image to another part of the image, which is also often used for repair. You have down here the impaint brush. This is the main tool for repairing things in your image. And as you can see, this has this little triangle. So you click here, you can see other repair tools for your images. For example, a red eye removal tool. That's very useful. Here you have the pen tool, which helps you to create curves and also shapes. So that is very useful. A little bit advanced though. And this one is a shape tool where you click on it and you have all these different shapes and you can select one and then click and drag to create um, these kind of shapes. Let's give this a filling. So you can see I can create this kind of square and I can create a harp shape if I want to. So there's a lot of different shapes in here. And of course the text tool, these are the main tools you will use a lot. Now, I also want to give you some shortcuts and pointers on where to find things in Affinity Photo to get started. So one of the most important, I think, is that pressing down your middle mouse button will allow you to move around the canvas. So this is especially interesting when you're zoomed into the picture and want to move around to see different parts of the picture. Click and hold your middle mouse button for that. To zoom quickly, hold your control key and rotate your mouse wheel and this will help you zoom in and out. 
Then, of course, there is also a copy function. So, for example, you have a shape here and with your move tool selected, click on it while holding control, click and drag and this will copy this shape. So this is also very useful to make copies of shapes. Another way you can make a copy is where you select the shape that you want to copy or the element and press control C like Caesar and then control V like Venus and you can see this has made a copy here on the right side with these layers. Another thing to point out here is if you don't know where to find something you can go here to view and studio and then you can see here all the different kind of windows you can see in your affinity photo and the hook next to it means that currently this is displayed. If you don't find something, for example, the layers, the history, the colors, the effects, stuff like that, make sure there's a hook next to it and then look here on the right side if you can see that tab. Another important thing that is confusing to beginners is layers and how they work. So you can think about layers basically as transparent sheets and these sheets go on top of each other. Think about like glass sheets and each of these glass sheets has a little bit of different content like one has the picture and the next one has a bit of text and the next one has a shape. If you now apply adjustment layers for example that you can find down here they will be applied to everything you see below. For example let's go with this recolor adjustment here and you can see I have my recolor adjustment now on top of everything else and this means that everything below that will change in color. But, and this is important, if I click and drag this onto one layer, you can see that this influences only that one layer or if I place it below other layers, it will only influence what is below this adjustment layer. And this is how you specify where you want this effect to be taken effect. So you can see if I put it on top, it affects everything. If I put it below, it only affects the lower layer or the lower two layers. And there is another thing that's important about layers and that is you can create groups. Let's select these three layers here. I select all of them by clicking on one, holding shift and then clicking on the lowest. So all of them are selected in between and then pressing control and G like group on my keyboard and this will create the group. So now if I put the adjustment inside of the group, you can see that this will only influence the layers that are in the group. So for example, if I take another layer into my group, this will also influence that layer. If you're talking about layers, we should also talk about masks and they are good for two things. Deciding which part of the layer should be visible and also deciding which part of a layer an effect should be applied to. Okay, so how do you create a mask? You select the layer in your layers tab and then down here you have this little mask icon. You click it and this will apply the mask to the layer. So usually when you just click it, you have a white mask, which means everything in the layer is visible. And you can remember this very easy by thinking white is brightness like light and makes things visible, while black is darkness and make things invisible. So now if we select our mask, and we use a brush that is set to black as the color and I paint on my mask, you can see that things are getting invisible. And you can of course switch over to white again in your brush color to make things visible again. So that is very easy. But you can also use that with your adjustment layers and by the way adjustment layers have an inbuilt mask. So let's go back here to our recolor adjustment. You can see now everything is red and my recolor adjustment is a white square. Now if I take my brush and set it to the color black and paint onto the adjustment, you can see that in the areas where I paint it becomes blue which means it's not 
changed by my adjustment. So if I change the color in my adjustment layer, everything will change in the white areas, but nothing will change in the black areas. And this is how masks work. Pixels and resolution, a topic that is confusing for a lot of beginners. What does that mean? Well, your picture is a digital picture and this means it's made from little squares which each have one color and one brightness setting and this is one pixel. So you can think about this like with a mosaic like this which has little stones in it and these make up your picture. And this also, if you think about it as a mosaic, gives you a good starting point to think about pixels when you want to print them or when you want to resize your image. Because like with a physical mosaic, if you go further away, it still looks sharp, it still looks detailed, even more detailed because the stones are so small that you can't see the individual stones anymore. But if you come too close to your mosaic, you suddenly see huge stones and the image loses its resolution. The image starts to look very blocky and in some occasions you might even not understand what the details are anymore that you're looking at. So this means if you have a low resolution image and you try to make it too big in your canvas, in your document, it becomes super pixelated. So don't use pictures bigger than they originally are, but you can always use pictures smaller than they originally are. But there's another thing you need to understand. In Affinity Photo, we are not only working with our pictures on their own, you can also create a document, which is a container basically, and put your images and other parts like text into that document. And this document on its own has a pixel resolution. So let's look at that. You go to File and New, and there you have suggested formats for web, for photo, press ready, print, all these kind of things are in there. And they give you a certain resolution that you can see here on the site or sometimes also written under the suggested format. For example, here it says 1920 by 1080, which is the classic 1080p resolution. This is the resolution of your document. And the important part about this is everything you put into that will be displayed to you at the resolution of the document. And it also will be exported out of the program in the resolution of the document, regardless if the image you put into the document is of higher resolution or not. Okay, so let's look at what that means. You can see here, I have this nice picture of the landscape with the church. If I zoom into it, it gets a bit pixelated, but we still can see a lot of details here with the windows and the spiky roofs of the tower and stuff like that. Now, watch this. If I resize the image to make it smaller like that, it will now be rendered in the resolution of the document, which means if I zoom into suddenly the picture appears to have less resolution. It still has the original resolution, but it is shown to me in a lower resolution because I made it smaller inside of my document. So it is basically rendered to us. It's simulated in a way that it looks to fit the resolution of our document. And if I make it bigger again, you can see, there we go. The detail is still there. Nothing has changed. So this is something to think about in the sense of pixels and resolutions when it comes to your document. Okay, now let's compare pixels to vectors. Over here on the left side, we have a tool that can create for us vector shapes, for example, a circle. And now the interesting thing here is that this is based on a mathematical line. So this doesn't have to do with pixels. It's completely independent of pixels. Now, remember again what I said before, our document still has a pixel resolution, which means if I zoom in here, 
it looks like this has a pixelated outside, but there's also a blue line as you can see here. And the blue line is the actual outside of my shape. I want to show you what happens if I resize the shape. Let's make it really big. And you can see it appears sharper on the edges. And you can still resize it as big as it goes. And it will be sharp on the edges. Because this is not dependent on pixels. It is dependent on mathematical lines that create this shape. This is also true for text, which is also based on curves. So if you write something, you can put this in any kind of size and it will still stay sharp because this is based on curves. The starting point to think about good photography and good editing is that you actually improve your photo skill because the better the starting material is, the better the results will be for your edits. And one shortcut to improve your photo skills is to go, for example, to a page like Unsplash and there you can find a lot of awesome pictures. You can create your own collections to collect the things that you like and you can get a lot of ideas. You can see how people take these photographs, what kind of tricks they are using. And this will help you a lot to improve your own photography and get better starting pictures to edit. These are the basics so far. I want to suggest to you some other videos I've created like this about selecting, like this about using masks, like this video about replacing a sky and like this video about how to remove things from photos. Thank you very much for watching and see you in my next tutorial. Bye.